American Football Network. Expected to be in the mid 80s before we're done. We also have a fairly decent wind with us this afternoon. It was 12 miles an hour out of the southwest, and they are calling for just up to 20. Michigan will get the benefit of that win to open this ball game as they will be defending the southern end zone. And we're just seconds away from that very fact. And here comes the football, and it is going to be caught about three yards deep in the end zone by Ellerson. And up he comes to the five to the ten, trying to look for some running room. Spins up to the 15, and that's as far as he will go. Across that Wisconsin front five, the center is Ron Versnick. And they're talking about possible postseason honors for him. In the backfield this time. They're strong to the left. Both ends are tight, and the handoff is given off to the tailback, and he does not have a first down as he is stopped short at the 25, chipped up by Winfred Carraway. Who is back for the Wolverines? Mr. Anthony Carter standing at the 25-yard line, and this is a short kick. It's going to hit at the 38 and jumps back upfield and finally is going to be killed right at the 40-yard line of Michigan, so the Wolverines will have the football in excellent position. They have the slot man. Greg Dunaway in motion to the right side, and the handoff goes to Rickson. He finds an opening off the right side, and he's up over the 45 before he is slammed by Matt Vandenboom, who had to come up and make the stop on him from that free safety spot. It's tipped and incomplete as Clint Sims got a hand on that football. He almost tipped it high enough so that one of the deep men in that Wisconsin secondary had a shot at it. So has some time, fires it. It's caught by Ricks. He's got a first down at the Wisconsin 48-yard line. He was tackled immediately by linebacker Jim Melka. To the left side, Dunaway comes in motion. Bean is flanked to the right, and here is Smith giving it off to Ricks. He finds Rennie room at the 40 to 35, and he is knocked down by the stop again and Michigan on a roll here the first time they get their hands on the football they have it first and 10 at the Badger 35 being left side Carter right high formation in the backfield behind Smith who turns and gives it off to Ricks a big hole up the middle 30 25 and lose another man hits up the 20 and he is down first and 10 to go for Michigan at the Badger 20 Greenwood came over to make the stop as he or caught the football four out of the five plays. This time they split the setbacks, give it to Ricks, and he's hit around the ankles at the line of scrimmage, but manages to stagger forward for maybe a couple or three yards. Vandenboom got a hand on him, and we have a Wisconsin player stretched out, and it could be Vandenboom. We can see from the monitor that it looks as though when he did reach out and grab Ricks, he might have got nailed in the helmet. Very uns And make it second down and 13. Tom Dixon over the ball at center for the Wolverines. Stephon Humphreys. Jerry DiOrio right now, the guards. Garrett and Stringer are the tackles. And again, Dunaway is going to move up on that line as a tight end. Carter split to that side. Bean Wright, setbacks are split back to Pasco Smith. Guns it for Carter. He makes a diving reception, or did he? Yes, he did. Wisconsin said no, but the official says yes at the 13 yard line. Joston on top of him there as Anthony Carter had to scoop that one up just before it hit. His 119th of his Michigan career. It is third down and two for the Wolverines at the Badger. 13 Smith on a rollout. Keeps it. Finds a room, some room to the left and he's down to the eight yard line. It'll be first and goal to go for Michigan. Dunaway and Carthens. Here is the handoff to Ricks. He's staggering around. Finds some running room off the right side and he's down inside the four. Jody O'Donnell. Inside linebacker spilled him there. Brad Smith close to the goal line. He's over there. Touchdown, Michigan. Sending this crowd into a frenzy early here in this ball game as he banged his way off the right side. He was hit about three times at the two. Simply spun away from the would-be tacklers and just got over for the first six points of the season. And here's Ali Haji Sheik in to attempt the extra point now. Rich Hewlett kneeling at the 10, and here's the snap, and it is put up and through. We have a timeout on the field. We have 8.51 remaining in this first quarter. The score, Michigan 7, Wisconsin nothing.
has, among his multitude of records, the most career kickoff returns. This could be his 50th if he seals this one, but this one is going to go into the end zone and out. It was a question whether it was going to go out of bounds before it got into the end zone because it was another sailing kick that came to the near side, but it did make it into the end zone. Michigan will have it first and 10 at their own 20 before they get underway. Let's quickly pause. 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Michigan Football Network. This is WUOM 91.7 Ann Arbor, WVGR 104.1 Grand Rapids. The radio has on first play to give it off to Rick sweeps the right side puts his head down and he drives up to the 25 it looked like he might have coughed the football up but I think he got it back AC now it's up the middle and it is intercepted by the Badgers at the 30 yard line of Michigan Jody O'Donnell a linebacker jumping in front of the intended receiver Lawrence Ricks coming up with a diving interception and the Badgers are right back in business here yeah, it was a, just a terrible throw, Tom. He tried to force one into a receiver that was very well covered. Oh, the Badgers, who trail at 7-3 to three with under two minutes to go in this first quarter, have their hands on the football. The ball is spotted close to the 29 of Michigan. Flank wide to the right side. They have a spot man left in Williams. That's where Straka is split. Green is the lone setback behind quarterback Randy Wright, who drifts back to throw. Stays in the pocket, fires it up the middle, and it is cut down at the 8-yard line by Tim Straka. It'll be first and goal for the Badgers. The Badgers wasting absolutely no time and taking advantage of that turnover as back to pass went right, had all kind of time, and struck a Michigan two. He slides away from one man, and he's close to the goal line, but I believe he stopped just about a foot short. That was Al Toon who made... Up to the line of scrimmage come the Badgers. Wright will keep it himself, pushes his way forward. Is he over? They'll wait until they umpile. There's no signal given yet by the officials that he is. Well, I have a I felt that he got in there, Tom, but uh, you never know when they wait this long. You have to think that he did not. Nope, they may have to turn that football sideways, though, to spot it because that front is resting almost on that goal line. That's how close it is. You know, the quarterback sneak was always the automatic type play in this situation, Tom, but uh, I don't think it's a real good play. The poor quarterback has absolutely no momentum whatsoever. He basically, if he can't fall into the end zone, he won't score. He's going to try it again and again. This time, he's over. Touchdown, Badger. Boy, it didn't look as though he went any farther on that one than he did on the first one, but it was enough, and the Badgers have gone on top. In four plays after picking off a Steve Smith interception. Mark Duran out to attempt the point after now. And it is streaking through there was Mike Foran to block that point after as he timed his momentum beautifully. It looked like he might be offside, and the kicker is stretched out on the turf right now. He might be injured. In any case, we have a timeout on the field, 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter to score. Wisconsin 9. Michigan seven. The fifteen. Testing at the Wolverine twenty five yard line. Armstrong and Ricks in the eye formation behind Smith on an option. It is kept by Smith rolling to the right side goes to the 30 hit from behind at the 35 and rolls up close to the first down marker at the 36 yard line and that is going to be enough for a first down to Smith pushing that football close to the 37 before a linebacker Kyle Borland could make the stop on him get it off clock ticking away with three two one and they did not make it. So that is the end of the first quarter here at Michigan Stadium. The uh, score, Wisconsin 9, Michigan 7. Well, it's definitely part of Michigan's offensive plan today to, to throw on the, uh, on, the law, on the running situations, Tom, what you normally would consider in Michigan football to be running situations, and to run when everyone thinks they're going to pass. That uh, is exactly what they're showing so far. Well, this looks like a passing posture, a second and 10, but this time they're going to run on the delay. They give it off to Ricks. He squirms away from one man at the 37, and he's up to the 40-yard line. 
That'll be a gain of three. It'll make it third down and seven. Jim Milka on the stop for the Badgers. As Steve Smith has him up to the line of scrimmage. Splits the set box. Carter right, Bean left. Back to pass goes Smith. He's being rushed, fires it. It is caught by Ricks at the 45 of Michigan, and a flag is thrown, and we might have a roughing the passer penalty coming up here. As Ricks was pulled down short of the first down, however, a flag was thrown as Daryl Sims broke in on Steve Smith and apparently was a little late. This time, Armstrong and Ricks are in the eye behind Smith. Ricks gets the handoff, runs a straight dive off the right side, and he's down to the 37-yard line. Again, is lined up as the tailback in this eye formation. This time on the option play, Smith. Tackle by David Greenwood down at the 29-yard line, 28-yard line of the Badgers, and that's another first down for Michigan. twice 35 and 39 yards respectively has this wind to his back as takes the snap steps into the ball sends a high spiral and it is going to go out of bounds at the 18 yard line so Michigan will have 336 in which to work Anthony Carter split to the right side Vince Bean to the left High formation behind Smith. Who hands it off to Rogers. Started up the middle, then swung to the left side, and he is going to be knocked down in the neighborhood of the 21-yard line, Brad Grable. And as Tom mentioned before the game, not at all adverse to sticking him in there in this pressure pack situation an opening afternoon. Smith, play action pass, fires it up here, and it is incomplete. It bounced to Carter on one hop up at the 30-yard line. Sun worshippers getting their fill today. Here's Smith back to pass. He runs out of the pocket, spins away from one man. Now he throws it up here, and it is caught by Dunaway at the 23. He's rustled down to the 26. And that'll be short of a first down. He lifts a high, high spiral, and it is going to be caught by Merrill, who is stiffened immediately at the 33-yard line. Ryan Merrill uh, did not use a whole lot of judgment on that one as staring him in the face was a Michigan tackler. As soon as he caught the football, Keith Bostick. And Randy Wright. Appears to have shaken off his problems, and back to pass he goes, throws it out here, and it is caught by Michael Jones, hit immediately by John Lott up at the 42-yard line. Scrambling around, throws it away over on the right side. Gary Ellerson was the only man there, but I think that Wright just heaved that one well over his head intentionally. If not, if he didn't do it on purpose, he should have, because Ellerson had two Michigan tacklers right with him. If he caught that football, it would have been a loss. It does stop the clock. Converted quarterback here is right, throwing it up to the near side, but it's overthrown, intended for Tim Straka down at the Michigan 40. Oddity there is that both John Joston and Rich Hewlett started their collegiate careers as quarterbacks. Both now find themselves at a free safety spot. They're ready for the snap. Has it, steps back a couple of yards, fires a quick out, and it is caught at the 45 to the 40 to the 35-yard line. Goes David Keeling, tackle made by Evan Cooper. Draw spake, back to pass, goes right. He hits his man up at the 25-yard line, and that's going to be another first down for the Badgers as coming out of the backfield was Chucky Davis after the fake to Davis. Michigan released him, and Davis went down about eight yards, caught the football, and he has another first down for Wisconsin at the 24 of Michigan. Wisconsin has their full complements of three timeouts remaining. Setback split behind right. Keeling wide left. Jones right. Here's a little swing out to Davis at the 30-yard line, and he runs out of bounds at the 25 in front of Mike Bourne. 
And that will stop the clock as the ball will be placed at the 25 yard line. Second down. No gain on that last play. The biggest problem for Michigan in trying to stop the pass is that they just haven't haven't put any pressure at all on the quarterback. And uh, Wright stands there with uh, all the time in the world. And yeah, I don't think you can blame a defensive back for giving a little extra cushion when he knows the guy has a five second pass route. On second and ten. Wright. Play action pass. Back to throw. Fires it. And it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Michael Jones and John Lott covering on that play with the pass sailed out of bounds. And Lott was in. For, I mean. He couldn't have drawn him in better position. He actually was going for the ball with the receiver on his back. He may have the wind to his back. Third down. And 10, a long count at the line of scrimmage by Wright. He has the snap, going back to pass. Fires it straight up the field. It's intercepted by Cooper at the 5. Goes to the 10, to the 15, and he is knocked down at the 18-yard line. So forget about the field goal. And at the 5-yard line. Going right through that one up for grabs. There was certainly nothing there for him uh, to even be thinking about throwing the ball there. We have 47 seconds on the clock. Moves off to the left side, and Vince Bean splits right on third down and six. 21 seconds to go. And, and Smith stuffs it off to Rick, starts around the left side, and he is going to be hit short of a first down at the 26, and final timeout of this first half, and they do. Seven seconds on the clock. A booming kick into this win, and this time Merrow decides to call for a fair catch back at the 28 yard line. And there is only six seconds. But now comes up to the 30, heads for the sideline, runs out of bounds, and that is going to be the end of the first half. So after one half of play here at Michigan Stadium, we've got what everybody expected, a close one. Michigan leading Wisconsin 13 to 9. And we'll be right back after we pause one minute for this special message. This is the Michigan Football Network. The 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, the 49 of Wisconsin. And That's there are no flags. There are no flags on the football field, Tom. And Anthony Carter went into the traffic and came out the side door and got it going he was caught from behind as someone tried to strip the ball away from him he held on and it's a great jump for the Wolverines to get off that way in the second half and his jersey displaced a little bit from his shoulder and we'll have to keep an eye on him now and we've got a new set in that backfield as the ball is given off to Armstrong and he runs straight ahead down to the 46 yard line Ricks the tailback Armstrong the fullback Ball is fake to Ricks. Back to Pasco Smith. Delivers it up here to the tight end. Dunaway at the 41-yard line. He's hit immediately and driven back by David Greenwood. The only wide man he's left. Smith barking out the signals at that line of scrimmage. Waiting for the snap from Tom Dixon. Takes it. Fakes on the option. Pitches back. It's wild. It's loose. And Smith, I believe. No, it's still loose. And a big pileup back at the Michigan 42. Looks like Michigan did get it. That ball was jumping around from player to player and finally could be that Smith just came back and dropped out on himself but that is a monumental loss and Michigan will have to give up the football preparing to field this punt from Bracken around the 20 yard line Bracken averaged over 43 yards per punt last year sails this one high not that long though it's going to hit at the 30 and roll out of bounds at the 26 yard line the Badgers will have it for the first time in the second half and they trail Michigan 13 to 9 with 12.42 remaining in the third quarter. From the setbacks into the I formation. As Carter comes off to the right and Bean left, and the handoff goes to Ricks, finds a hole up the middle, plows his way into Wisconsin territory as he is inside the 48 yard line. And boom, shaken up early in the ballgame. Ball is given off to Ricks, trying a sweeper on the left side, and he's just not going to go anywhere. He possibly got a yard to the 47, but about four Badgers were there in a hurry. First and ten for the Wolverines. 
At the Badger 31 yard line and Smith on play action back to throw fires it over here to the sideline where it is caught on a diving reception at the 21 no, 26 yard line again by Dunaway. Setbacks again line up in the eye behind Smith on second and five and Smith stops it off to Ricks finds a hole off the left side goes to the 20 to the 15 fumbles the football it's caught in the air by a Badger at the 11. Clint Sims fielded that football as Ricks was leveled on a bone crushing tackle at the 15 yard line the ball popped loose right into Sims arms. Wright will throw retreating to the goal line fires it up here to Williams he had it and then dropped it at the 15 yard line. And I mean he was open. Michigan looking for him to throw again as they have another deep back in there but this time on the delay they go to Williams he's trying to sprint around the right side turns the corner but not very far as body who had just checked into the ball game for Michigan shoved him out of bounds. And we have a Badger shaken up on that play. Altoon splits right. Back to pass goes right, and the flag is thrown. Right staying in the pocket, but apparently they had stopped the play before it got underway, which would indicate movement on that offensive line, possibly. Wide to the left side comes David Keeling. Wide to the right side goes Toon. Setback split. And here goes right back to throw. He's being chased. Comes up to the five. Hit from behind and dropped by Winfred Carraway at the seven-yard line. Low pass from center, but Winslow gets it away, and it is a short kick. Cooper feels it on a fair catch at the Wisconsin 38-yard line. 7.37 to go. Third quarter. Michigan leads at 13-9. They have the football in Wisconsin territory. Play action pass. Fifth throws it upfield. It's intercepted by Jim Milka at the Badger 27-yard line. So just like that, Michigan gives the advantage back to the Badgers. On first down, the Badgers send Jones in motion to the left side. And the ball is stuffed off to the fullback. Green, he plows his way up to the 30-yard line. Chucky Davis. Running out of that tailback position now for the Badgers. Junior out of Macon, Georgia. Lined up behind Gerald Green. Here goes Straka in motion to the right side. Ball is faked by Wright. He's going to carry it on the option. Finds running room to the 35 to the 40. Hit from behind, and he's up to the Wisconsin 48-yard line before finally being dragged down from behind by Brad Cochran. High formation behind Randy Wright. He'll throw on first down. Slings it up here, and it is caught, and he holds on to it. Tim Straka and a collision there at the 35-yard line with Carlton Rose. And Straka is not getting up. Rose is. David Keeling in to replace him. Rich Hewlett replacing Evan Cooper in that Michigan secondary. First and 10 to go. Here is the option again by Ray. He pitches it wide to Davis, and he is chased out of bounds. A little advance on that play as he was chased out right at the first down marker at 35 yard line by Tom Hassel. We haven't talked a lot about Tom Hassel and the outside linebacker taking over for Mike Lemeron who was injured but Hassel a converted fullback. Second down and 10 yards to go for the Badgers. Two wide receivers to the left. That's the wide side of the field. And here is right back to throw. He's looking to that side as he fires it and it is out of bounds intended for Michael Jones. They went to that area where the wide receivers were set. However, right through that one, well away from Jones. So it'll be third and ten. Temperature creeping into the high 80s, and here is right back to throw. Flings it, and it is incomplete intended for the tight end, Jeff Null, down at the 20-yard line. So apparently he's okay, and that pass just was thrown away from Null. So see if we're going to get a punt or a field goal attempt now. It'd be a, it's going to be a punt. Against Ohio State, but Wisconsin's chosen to punt this one and see if they can put Michigan in the hole as he's going for the coffin corner and he spins it out of bounds, I believe, or did it kick back in? No, it kicked back in and went into the end zone. That ball hit at the two-yard line just at the sideline marker and had it kicked to the other way. Michigan would be right now faced with a first and ten at their two. It didn't. It spun back in and they'll be getting it at their 20. But since that time, it has been inconsistent. We have Eddie Garrett running out of the fullback position now, the freshman, but the ball goes to Rick swinging around the right side, and he staggers out of bounds up close to the 29-yard line. Clint Sims, who came up with that fumble recovery off Ricks the last time Michigan was deep in Badger territory, it's remaining in this third quarter. 
Eddie Garrett remains the fullback in front of Rick Rogers. The ball is given to Rogers by Smith. He's hit from beside and knocked down at the 42 yard line as Greenwood from his safety position was coming. Well he came again just like he did the play before Tom and uh, this time he got there a little bit quicker and cut his angle down and was able to reach Rogers in the backfield. Setbacks are split behind Smith. Drops straight back looking to throw fires it for Ricks. It's overthrown intended for Lawrence down at the 45 of the Badgers. The ball is at the 16 yard line of the Badgers first and 10 right back to pass throws it sideline incomplete. Al Toon, the intended receiver, up about five yards, but it was overthrown. And on the give to Green, Green is stacked up after a gain of perhaps two to the 17 by linebacker Mike Boren. And it's right drifting back to throw, fires it way overthrown, intended for the fullback Gary Ellerson coming out, but Wright had some pressure on him that time. Dave Meredith had streaked through there along with Joe Gray. And the coverage was excellent again. I don't think you're going to find a lot of teams. He tripped up by Mark Shoemate, who has recovered all right to get back in there at that outside linebacker position. And up Wisconsin. Second down and seven after that three yard pickup by Rogers. Setback split behind Smith, who'll go back to throw. Swings it out here. It is caught by Eddie Garrett at the 40. Goes to the 45, and he is hit on a necktie tackle, and another flag comes down. Possibly a face mask there at the 47-yard line where they had to go for the first down. High formation behind Smith. He gives it to Eddie Garrett, and Garrett goes nowhere as he is hit at the line of scrimmage. Big number 76, Mark Shoemate, spun in there on him, and he got quick help from Daryl Sims. Well, it's second down and 10. And here is Smith back to throw, scrambling around, throws it up here, and it is caught by Rogers at the 42, goes to the 40, where he is hauled down. And they send Carthens in motion, give it off to the tailback Rogers. He has a first down as he breaks loose at the line of scrimmage and scrambles his way down to the 30 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for Michigan. Hearts are split on first down now. No shift to the I formation behind Steve Smith. Armstrong and Rogers. And it's Rogers with the football up the middle. He comes to the 35, breaks a tackle at the 30, and he goes down close to the 25 yard line. Rick Rogers. Great. Tony Carter coming out of there now for a moment. As Michigan lining up again with two tight ends, being the only split man, he's off wide to the left side. But taking a long time at the line of scrimmage, takes the snap, goes to Rogers, and this time he is hit, and it looked as though David Greenwood, who's been sneaking in there time after time, is back on the spot again. Michigan football network. And we have an official timeout right now, and they're attending to another Badger. Greg Armstrong remains the fullback set in the eye in front of Rick Rogers. Milk Carthens in motion right side handoff is pitched back to Rogers on the option goes to the 20 He's hit from the side and driven down in the neighborhood of the 15 yard line where they would have had to go on for the first nine. It was Kyle Borlin on the stop. Smith turns gives it off to Rogers trying to swing wide. He's hit around the ankles falls forward and out all depends on where they mark it. No Tom he did not make it. They're unpiling as the football is placed down the nose of it quite a bit short of the 15 and that would indicate that he did he not make was it short very tentative running there in that type of situation and Randy Wright has gone all the way at quarterback for the Badgers waits for the snap from Ron Versnick hands it off to his tailback Chucky Davis he tries to go up the middle and he doesn't get far. And Randy Wright's not going to do it. He pitches it back to Williams, cuts up the field at the 20, hit from behind, and dropped up at the 21 yard line. Strack is right. Jones left. There are the wide men. And Wright will go back to throw. Swings it up, and it is caught at the 28 yard line by Jeff Nolte. That ball looked like it went right through the arms of Keith Bustick. It did and it almost went through Nolts too. Nolt juggled it all the way down to his ankles before he finally secured the ball. 
Ball resting shy of the 29-yard line in Wisconsin territory. First and 10. Here is the handoff on a counter to Williams around the left side. Break free at the 30, 35, 40, and he is down up at the 42-yard line. With another key carry for Wisconsin. Two receivers this time split to the left, but Williams is going to try it right, and this time Robert Thompson comes sailing through there to grab him for a huge loss back at the 33-yard line. Here is Randy right back to throw on second and long. Lost one up here, and it is caught, but was he inbound? No, says the official. Al Toon was on the wrong side of the sideline when he grabbed that one. This time they'll split the setbacks, but Williams is not in the backfield, and it's Randy Wright going back to throw. He swings it up here to Davis at the 35, and he's hit right there and driven back by a fired-up Michigan defense, Keith Bostick and Paul Gierga. And that was a mini screen. It wasn't an all-out screen. He only had two people in front of him, but uh, that was a little bit of a screen. And I think that Gary Moeller remembered, too. They're standing back at the 25. Here comes the punt. High catches the win, holds. Carter feels it at the 30, trying to get some running room wide right now, decides to cut back up, and he is down at the 33-yard line. The handoff is given to Lawrence Ricks, trying to look for some running room off the left side. Slides away from one man at the 35, goes to the 40, hit from behind, and knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. And here comes another flag as Ricks was hit well out of bounds by a Badger. That was Richard Johnson. And here is Smith rolling back to throw, looking straight down the middle, fires it over here to Bean. He's got it at the 21-yard line on a diving reception, and it'll be first and 10 for Michigan at the Badger 21. Just at the 10 and finally pushed out of bounds at the 8-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Michigan. He stopped and turned it up the field, cut back against the green ever such a little bit, but there's five Badgers waiting for him, and every one of them fell to their knees when Steve Smith taking a long time on the count. On the option, slides down the line of scrimmage, stops, goes back up, and in! Touchdown, Michigan! Smith show a whole bunch of Badgers. He got everybody going to that wide side. He literally stopped and turned it up the field, cut back against the green ever such a little bit, but there's five Badgers waiting for him, and every one of them fell to their knees when Steve Smith cut back. So with that touchdown scamper by Steve Smith, Michigan goes up 19 to nine and Ali Haji Sheik will try to tack on another point. Away now, and he lifts the sailor. It's gonna go into the end zone to Ellerson. He chooses to down it. Almost got to the goal line. Oh boy, if he had wore size 15s rather than size 10s, we might have had ourselves a safety there because he almost planted that right foot on the goal line. It was 15 for 26 on the day, but this time they're going to keep it on the ground, and they give it to the big bruising fullback, Gerald Green, and straight up the middle he comes to the 26-yard line, runs into Paul Giergash. Second and three play, right on the option, spins around, keeps it himself, plows up to the 30, and that will be a first down for the Badgers. First and 10 for Wisconsin, working from their 30, and Wright will throw on first down. Swings one out here to the left side, and it is incomplete as Strack uh, went to his knees at the Michigan 47-yard line, trying for the reception, but failed to come up with it. Gentlemen, and I don't think half the official staff do either. Anyway, we're back to action. Third and 12. Here's Wright back to throw. Throws it up here to the sideline, incomplete. Marion Body was contesting with Al Toon for the football, and Toon failed to come up with it. And so, quickly, Michigan stifling another Wisconsin advance. And Anthony Carter, Mr. Thrill, will trot out onto the field and be on the receiving end of this punt off the foot of Glamnell. Body was in excellent position again, Tom. He kind of hung in the air trying to avoid any possibility of interference there, but uh, he was in perfect position to defend on that pass again. Here comes the punt. Short punt. Carter lets it drop at the 45. He's going to just stand clear of this one and let it go. And it takes a good Wisconsin roll. Down to the 25, 24, 23-yard line. Anthony a little upset with himself that he didn't go up and grab that one, but he wasn't really in very good shape for it. It was 10 yards up the field from him. 
directing traffic, hands it off to his tailback, and he finds some running room as he's up to the 27, 28 yard line. That's Lawrence Ricks. And the first trade out. Setbacks will line up into the I formation behind Smith. And again, he goes to Ricks, and Lawrence goes straight up the middle, and he is hauled down just shy of the first down, up to about the 32 yard line. Here's some other scores. Oklahoma on top of West Virginia, 14 to nothing after a quarter. They can nurse their bumps and bruises all the way to the bank, as the old expression goes. First and ten, they again go to Lawrence Rick, swinging wide, picking his hole, and he slides up to the 39-yard line before finally being tackled. Smith will go to Rogers, and up the Fumble. middle goes Rick Rogers, fumbles the football. It's loose, and Wisconsin has it. Siberia, uh -oh. one way. Uh-oh, somebody on that line of scrimmage raised up early. That was big number 79, Bob Winkler. Now, I tell you, there's no way he's going to disguise himself when he does that. He is 304 pounds. And here goes right back to throw. Cox his arm, swings it off to the left side, caught in a one-handed grab, and then out of bounds he goes as he lost the football, but it's going to be a reception. That was Jeff Nall. He got it on one hand started to juggle the football and as he went out of bounds he lost it but it was after he was out of bounds so it will be a reception for no second and one right will go back to throw fires it it is caught at the 30 yard line but Chucky Davis gets away from a couple of Michigan tacklers stays on his feet and finally goes out of bounds at the 26 yard line that'll be a first down for the Badgers Wright takes the snap drifts straight back to throw Fires it over here. It is incomplete. There really wasn't anybody in the vicinity, but part of that was because Robert Thompson was sitting on top of Randy Wright when he threw the football. Well, I think he was dumping it off to his back, Tom, but uh, with that jolt from Thompson from behind, it just jammed the ball right into the turf. Second and ten. Clock now stopped. 329 remaining. Right. Wright gives the ball to Green. It's loose, and looks like Green fell on it. Or a lineman fell on it back I think at the Wright 26, got it. 27 yard line. I think Wright went back and got it. I know he did. Wright fakes to Davis, rolling left side, fires it upfield, and it is caught by Nall, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 20 yard line. No, that was not Nall. Check it. Brett Pearson, the other tight end. Oh, what a great recovery by Bostic because he was goofing around, faking a blitz. And as he stepped forward a couple of steps, the ball was snapped. The tight end had him beat terribly to the outside. And Bostic, uh, I think, recovered pretty darn well to get out there the way he did. And right, looking to throw, fires it over here, and it is caught by Toon, and he's out of bounds at the nine-yard line of Michigan. It'll be first and goal for the Badgers. There's a fake. Right rolling left side, fires it, and it is incomplete. Again, thrown for the tight end. Down at the five yard line, and that again was Pearson. Second and goal at the Michigan nine. Right, looking down that line of scrimmage, takes the snap, gives it off to Williams, and he is hit by Mike Bourne at the 10 yard line before he got anywhere. And kept the clock moving, too. Two minutes to go. Setbacks are split behind Randy Wright. Dropping straight back to throw into the end zone. Oh, it's incomplete. He threw it behind the intended receiver, Tim Stryker. Striker was making his cut to the inside, and Wright just sailed it behind him. That is one of the few times, though, that Wright has been off target in this ballgame. Most of his passes have been catchable. Well, he did get pretty good pressure, Tom, from Sinsich. He got to him. He got a hand in his face. Wright fourth down and goal outside the Michigan 10. And Wright stepping straight back. Lost. So into the end zone, it is bobbled and dropped. Incomplete, Michigan will take over. It was Al Toon, the intended receiver, and Marion Body got there to get a hand on it. Comes to naught at the Michigan 10, and the offense goes out onto the field, and a very, very tired and hot Michigan defense comes off, but they have played the Badgers to a standstill here in this second half. Michigan with Carter wide left, but nobody expects the Wolverines to throw the football now. As Smith gives it off to his tailback. This time gives it to his up man, and that's Gerald or Greg Armstrong carrying the ball up to the 20-yard line. Uh, 
Again, they're up to the line of scrimmage, and again, Smith gives it to Lawrence Ricks, and he has that football tightly wrapped as he goes to the 24-yard line. He was hit and dropped and then hit again. At this time, although the crowd ooh and it ah, there was no flag thrown, but... Back to action we go with 55 seconds to go. Suck it, and eight for the Wolverines. As the ball is given off to a new tailback in there, and running up to the 39-yard line goes Kerry Smith who has checked into the lineup for the first time this afternoon. We're running down to 30 seconds. And Steve Smith gives it to Kerry Smith, then he runs a slant off the right side up to the 42-43, and unless Wisconsin calls a timeout, that should be it. And the crowd sensing the impending conclusion of this ball game coming to their feet as we're down to five and there's the gun and that's the ball game and Michigan has successfully opened its 1982 season with a 20 to 9 victory over Wisconsin and we'll be back in just a moment right after we pause for this special message this is the Michigan Football Network we say thank you Michigan Replay with Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you by the General Motors Corporation, its Pontiac Motor Division, and its General Motors Parts Division. By the General Tire and Rubber Company, and by Budweiser. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. I'm Jim Brandstetter. Once again with me, head coach Bo Schembechler of the University of Michigan. Our second show of the season, and I must admit, coach, a lot better show this year than last when uh, Wisconsin upset you, but this year you got them. Right, and um, it was a great opening victory for us, Jim. Um, the good news is we won. Um, our offensive line, I think, um, played well, which was an area that we had to totally rebuild. The bad news is we made a lot of mistakes, but I believe the mistakes are things that we can uh, correct. You said last year that you'd never had a Michigan team play poorer than they did against Wisconsin. Well, opening up the Wisconsin game this year, I thought in the first series of downs you were going to blow them out because offensively you were dominant. That's true. I thought uh, early in the uh, game that uh, Ricks was running extremely well, as he did here on an off-tackle play. And um, our line blocking was good. Uh, we were dominating. You see some pretty good holes in there, and, and uh, we were ripping for yardage. Um, there's no question that I, um, I was surprised, to be honest with you. I thought we would uh, have difficulty blocking them, but uh, we, we did a pretty good job. Here's a pass to Anthony Carter, unfortunately, the only one he caught during the, during the day. Did they defense him that well, or? Um, no, I don't uh, think so. I think we just had a bad time getting the ball to him, to be honest with you. Here's the off-tackle play that scored for us after uh, Steve got us a first down on an option play. The first drive was an excellent drive. We took the ball and went right down and scored. Our line blocked well. We gave Steve protection, and I uh, was very well pleased with that. You must have felt great, the fact that offensively you looked that tough that early and had a mistake-free drive. Right, but it didn't continue that way, Jim. <laughs> that was the problem. There was an off-tackle play by their tailback. Got him a first down on a third and one. And here he throws over the middle. A great catch by the tight end, uh, Nolt, who um, caught the ball, was hit immediately. But now they're moving uh, deep in our territory. We held, and this knuckleball here, <laughs> slider, I don't know what it was, uh, cleared the uprights. And uh, the score now was 7-3. to three. Uh, He took that from Hoyt Wilhelm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, here we throw over the middle um, on a pass that was intercepted by uh, O'Donnell, their linebacker. Um, unfortunately, the tight end got off late and got into the pattern late, and Steve misread it and tried to force the ball in there, which, is, of course, it turned out was a mistake. Here's a pass over the middle to uh, Tim Stracker, their uh, split in for first down. 
uh, inside the 10, and then finally they sneak for the touchdown and, uh, and go ahead. You're behind now. The offense has sputtered since your opening drive. Are you thinking, oh, no, not another one like last year? No, I felt confident we could move the football. I, uh, I was worried about mistakes, and, uh, of course, we made them. But uh, here we are in the second quarter on a draw play. Uh, Smith runs for a first down. We probably made a mistake in this ball game, running him a little too much in the heat. And um, I think it affected his throwing. Uh, I don't think he can run, 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 and take the hits and do all these things. And particularly when they hit late like this. They were a bit chippy. They had well, like three had, or four. They, I think they had four uh, uh, late hits, which isn't good. It just isn't the way to go about it. Here, uh, uh, Rick Rogers dives in for the touchdown, and, and uh, we go ahead 13 to 9. Uh, we went for two uh, on a coach's whim, uh, which really. <laughs> That's what it was? Uh, yeah, kind of a coach's whim. And, uh, you know, you feel like something and you go for it. It wasn't a bad move because the score is 13 to 9 and uh, if you kick the extra point it's 14 to 9. 4 and 5 doesn't make a lot of difference. Uh, <laughs> here's a okay. slant pass over the middle. Uh, you know you have certain prerogatives when you're the coach. If you want to go for two you go for two. Boy you are getting <clears throat> uh, whimsical in your old age aren't here's you? Here's a pass uh, <laughs> to uh, Chucky Davis or tailback and they're on the move again. Here's a third down and an 11 play. And the big play uh, for us, uh, as uh, Evan Cooper intercepts here on a ball uh, that was intended for the flanker and uh, brings it back out uh, just before the half to thwart their drive. Uh, we run out the clock so that we go in at halftime uh, with a four-point lead. And at this point, your defense is really beginning to establish itself, which was really a sign of things to come in the second half. Uh, no question about it, Jim. Our defense played much better in this opening game than they did a year ago, and that's encouraging. Here's Anthony with one of these miracle escapes <laughs> and uh, comes out to uh, almost midfield. Houdini. And we squander this uh, opportunity, which uh, really hurts. You yeah. get the ball at midfield, you're leading by four, uh, you should take it in and score, and we, we did a poor job there. But the defense, as you say, is playing well. Here's Mike Boron on a counter play doing a great job. Um, here's a third and eight play where uh, he throws over the middle here and a uh, great defensive play by Evan Cooper. It's hard to catch the ball when you got a safety man that comes up and hits with that kind of authority. And uh, so uh, our defense was getting a little stronger. Here we are on the third down play and uh, Smith scrambles and throws the ball to Dunaway for a 16 yard gain and a first down. And right now we are on the move. Uh, an off-tackle play, and Ricks does a great job breaking it outside, and then he decides to give the ball to uh, their uh, safety uh, <laughs> and stops the drive. That's the third uh, great field position start you had, and you couldn't get it in, no points. Unbelievable how we, we tried to avoid winning this game, <laughs> uh, just avoid it. Uh, except for our enthusiasm and our tough play and good defense and our line blocking and good running, uh, we kept turning the ball over. And great conditioning, too, because this was not an easy game to play in this not heat. Not at all. It was hot, very hot. Uh, here, uh, Steve uh, uh, misreads the defense and throws the ball to uh, uh, Melka, their linebacker, and, and that was our second interception. We had two fumbles that turned the ball over. Uh, those things are not good. Here we are in the fourth quarter, and once again, Ricks, shows his speed and power here as he goes outside for a first down. Boy, no trouble at tailback. Um, no, he's, he's a good back. There isn't any question. Vince Bean with a great catch in the sideline near the 20-yard line. And Vince um, had called that play for you. Yes, huh? he did. Vince called it. He said they were playing me out uh, inside and we ought to throw that route, which is uh, what we did. Here's Ricks on a great run. Uh, you can tell he's got speed. They had the angle on him here and broke it outside and ran around him for a first down. And then uh, Steve Smith on the option, they angled out on it and gave him a tough look. Uh, so he cut back in behind the uh, pursuit and scored standing up. A lot of people were talking about Steve Smith saying, oh, he had another bad day. And there were some boos in the stadium. But again, I know you're committed to him and he is a fine young quarterback. Uh, uh, all you have to do, Jim, is ask the, the defensive coordinators that have to defense him. It is no fun. Here's a great uh, throw and catch. And, we stripped him of the ball, but unfortunately it went out of bounds uh, by their tight end. And now here they are moving again, and their defense is stiffening. Uh, we deepen our territory, and, and uh, 
We, did, we had another fumble. That's how they got the ball on our territory in the first place. Here's their last drive. A great play by Marion Body. We knocked the ball away, and uh, we end up with a 20 to 9 win. At this time of the year, a lot of people feel that the defense is ahead of the offense. In this situation, is it? Uh, yes, uh, in most of your games, uh, we're good football teams with uh, good defenses. Uh, the defense is going to be ahead of the offense. You'll see in all of the great close battles that have been played so far. Now, there may be some wide open games where they're uh, getting a lot of yardage and so forth, but the real defensive teams, the teams that are going to be the tough contenders, uh, your scores are not going to be high. Overall, as you look at this game, what is your overall impression? Are you looking at the kind of team you think has great potential? Are you pleased with the way they perform? And can you see more potential that's there? The good things in this game, first, the win. Second, I think our offensive line blocked better than we anticipated. The third thing is the defense played well and will improve. Now, on the negative side, uh, our passing game, our uh, fumbles, our interceptions, our mistakes are things that I know we can correct and get better at. Uh, we've got great enthusiasm. We're a well-conditioned team. Uh, it's just a matter we've got a lot of work to go. We're no great team by any manner of means. But um, there's a lot of fun out there, and, and uh, we're going to uh, uh, go right back to work uh, tomorrow and, and do everything we can to prepare for Notre Dame and see how things turn out. We'll be right back with a look at some new faces and new responsibilities behind the scenes at Michigan. One of the reasons for Michigan's success in football has been the fine assistance Bo has always had. This year, there are some new faces and changes. Alex Agassi, former head coach at Purdue and Northwestern and athletic director at Eastern Michigan, has joined the staff. And Bo's longtime aide, Jerry Hanlon, has moved from the offensive line to quarterback coach. They're two unique guys, and they'll be featured separately later this season. But there are other changes. Gary Moeller moves from quarterback coach to defensive coordinator. And Elliot Uzelak, after a seven-year hitch as head coach at Western Michigan, is back in Ann Arbor as the offensive line coach. He didn't leave the Western job on his own, and he still takes great pride in the job he did there. Uh, we had success at Western, so uh, you know I could walk away from that situation with my head up and very proud. Uh, we did not have losing seasons. and. As a matter of fact, we had four winning seasons in a row. So it was a different situation. The second thing, coming back here is an honor and a real pleasure for me because I have great feelings for the University of Michigan and its football program. And uh, I just love coaching football. And, hey, I'm not on any ego kick. I'll coach anywhere, anytime. I just love to work with young people and, and give them to play to the best of their abilities. I, I love it. I, I love working for Bo. Uh, he pushes us. Uh, he's tough on us, and he's tough on the players. But hey, uh, you know everybody loves him, and he loves us. And uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great feeling here. It's a special feeling. And not a lot of universities have it. And uh, in, in all honesty, it's because of Bo. And uh, I'm enjoying it very much. Yes. As for Moeller, the situation is the same as Uzelax, but different. He came with Bo as an assistant, left to become a head coach, came back again as an assistant, and now is handling his fourth separate responsibility as a Michigan assistant, defensive coordinator. Well, I think, first of all, Jim, as I've been in the Michigan system, so it's not really new. And uh, you keep an eye on the other side of the ball. You know how that is. When you're on offense, you kind of got to know what the defense is doing. And I think the idea of flipping back and forth does help you as a football coach. So defensively, they're giving you a lot of coverages. And I think offensively, they're coming up with all the pass patterns that they're running in the pros today. So it is a different game from that standpoint. We have to be more conscious of our pass rush and our coverages and yet be the same type of team that Michigan's always been against the run, not let people run on you. You know, it's taken me a little time to get back in the change because it's been five years being a defensive coordinator since I've been at it. But I feel good about it. And as long as I can get the signal calling down, which you know is a big job on Saturday afternoon, I think we'll be all right. Both men have had to make transitions. For Uzalac, it might be a bit tougher coming from a head coach's job to a position coach. Talking in specifics, I have to, number one, funnel everything into the offensive line. I have to, you know, get all my energies going in that direction and things like that. And then all my entire thinking has to be more offensively orientated. I have to think more about our offense, how we're attacking defenses, and, and to try to exploit you know, the defenses that we see running and passing the ball. So more, I'm, I'm more or less an offensive coach now, whereas a head coach, you have the offense, the defense, the kicking. 
recruiting, everything. And so I have to really funnel my energies more into one specific area. Muller's transition from quarterback coach to defensive coordinator shouldn't be that tough because he's had that job before. But he's also the first ever assistant head coach to Bo. A position of power or just a stand-in for the head coach when the hundreds of speaking requests start coming in? Well, that's probably part of it, some of the, the speaking engagements. But really, I think Bo just wants someone in a position. If he's not around and he is out, let's say he's out at a banquet or something, and the staff's meeting someone to take charge of the staff and stuff, and he's put me in that position. And uh, I'm excited about it. I feel honored, but I still just want to be a good assistant coach. The question everybody asks is, are, are you the heir apparent? No, I don't think it necessarily implies that. Uh, I think it's just the guy that's ready to take over if Bo isn't around, really. As we have seen in past years, collegiate football has become very, very big business. Every Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor, it's a million dollar gate, not counting concessions, but in addition to that, television. Two national networks now doing collegiate football, and there's cable companies involved. They're selling portable lights to stadiums now, so there's night football. Is television taking away a little bit of the traditional collegiate atmosphere of Saturday afternoons and picnics and the games for the students? Well, Jim, there's an enormous market out there for college football because of its popularity. And uh, I don't know whether it'll ever be overexposed. Uh, there, there's so much tradition involved in the college game, and the games are so exciting, and they're so much different. They're different offenses, different defense. It, it's just that kind of a game. Um, my concern only is that um, if there's a lot of money out there to be made, I'm in favor of making it. But uh, I think we ought to think in terms of sharing it. Uh, for this reason. Um, there are a lot of schools that can't finance their own programs through gate receipts that never get on television. And they need additional support as they can get it. And uh, my feeling is that, that the big schools should help support uh, some of the smaller ones so that we can maintain college football on all levels. Is there a danger too, Bo, of too much money involved sometimes makes people a little overzealous and they do things maybe that are just on the edge of legal and well, we're they getting... do some things that are illegal I mean they, you didn't say it like it is Jim. <laughs> okay and do you think there's a danger in that with all the exposure through television because that's the way the team gets recognition that's the way they get right. the recruits right well that's a problem and uh, but I think that you're going to find it's like any other business you know, more than 90% of the people are doing it within the rules, and there are always 10% that are going to try to find uh, some way to do it outside the rules so they can get an advantage. And uh, I don't care what business you're in, that's going to happen. And I don't believe that just because you, you're making a lot of money in football or that you have to fill the stadium that you're going to do it. I know of men who were unsuccessful in college football that steadfastly refused. Uh, to do the things that people wanted them to do in order to win. And uh, I have great uh, admiration and respect for those coaches. But those guys are probably out of work now. What do you say to them when another guy who cheats and goes crazy is making millions of dollars at some head coach's job and he's on TV all the time? Well, all, the only thing that you can hope is that eventually uh, they're going to get caught. People get upset when the NCAA cracks down on schools. I really don't. They violate the rules and they should pay the penalties. Uh, there isn't any question in my mind. And we should come to the point where these coaches who are in violation have got to lose their jobs. Enough said. We will be back with some night football. As a matter of fact, the next opponent for Michigan will be in the evening. We'll take a look at the opponent, the Irish from Notre Dame. Jerry Faust heads into his second year as head football coach at the University of Notre Dame, coming off a five and six season. Some people will tell you that the defense is sound, and it may have to carry the offense early in the season. Mark Zavagnin inherits the spot vacated by All-America Bob Crable. The Evergreen Park senior is quick, alert, and he hits with authority. 
And if he stays well, Zavagnin just may be another in a long list of Notre Dame All-America linebackers. Another defensive gem finds himself in the secondary. He's Dave Durison, one of the tri-captains along with Zavagnin and Phil Carter. Dave Durison can hurt you on the punt or kickoff return as well as with the intercepted pass. The Muncie, Indiana senior is a bona fide All-America candidate. Blair Keel is back at quarterback. Keel spent last year looking over his shoulder to see when he was going into a ball game or coming out of one. This year, however, the quarterback position is his as the season opens. More confident now that the job is his, it's an oversimplification to say that the Columbus, Indiana senior is the key to the Irish offense in 1982. The remaining tri-captain is tailback Phil Carter. Out of Tacoma, Washington, Carter's looking just like another All-America. He may split the tailback slot with Greg Bell, or you might see the Irish use both of them in the backfield at the same time. In any event, Carter has demonstrated that he can run with a ball. This is Tom Denon from WNDU in South Bend reporting for Michigan Replay. The shoe is on the other foot for this one. Last year, you beat Notre Dame when they were number one the week after the Wisconsin loss. And it's out of the frying pan and into the fire, isn't it? Well, that's true. Uh, Notre Dame is, um, is a tremendously well-personneled team. And um, they have most of their people back from last year. Uh, I don't think you ever figure to go into a Notre Dame game and out-personnel them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've got to play hard, and it's going to be a great football game, and we're really looking forward to it. What's the feeling playing at night? And the other thing, and I always ask this, playing in South Bend, uh, that's worth some points to them, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, sometimes I like to play on the road. I like uh, 60 football players and my staff, and we travel down there together, and we know we got a hostile crowd. And, it's us against them, and they can't come on the field. I mean, you know, they have to keep them back. Now, that may not be true at Notre Dame. Sometimes those students are on the field. But, uh, you know, we, um, that's all. I don't worry about that. As far as playing at night, uh, it's a new experience. Uh, I don't know, you know, how we'll react to that. But they have to play at night, too. So um, I, I don't think it'll make a lot of difference, and it should be an exciting game. Well, it certainly won't be an easy one. Uh, but we'll talk about that next week on Michigan Replay when we take a look at the Michigan-Notre Dame game. Join us. Michigan Replay has been brought to you by the General Motors Corporation, its Pontiac Motor Division, and its General Motors Parts Division, by the General Tire and Rubber Company, and by Budweiser.